Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I am Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm talking about five things you might be doing wrong. Now, before I go any further, I want to clarify wrong sounds like a judgment word. This is art. It's subjective. There's no judgment at all. But what I mean by that is there's five things that you might be doing that could get in the way of you getting the optimum final result with your photo. So these are five things to think about and potentially avoid to help you get the best possible result once you're finished editing. And to be clear, I'm super guilty of every single one of these. This is a bit of a reminder to myself and hopefully it gives you some insight as well. Let's get going. The first one is this. You go out, you shoot something like this, you're like, oh, this is pretty. You get back home and you're like, God, oh, I can't wait to edit it. So you're doing things like this and you just start playing around with the light and you're doing all these kind of things. You're like, ooh, I want to adjust the colors. I want to get some saturation and some vibrance. I want to come over here. I want to go to golden hour because it was sunrise and doing all this stuff. The point here is that you're hurrying and you did not make a plan. So number one, slow down. Think about what you want to do. What edit? do you want? How do you want your photo to look when you're finished with it? What things do you want to do to the photo? And then make a plan and look at it and say, okay, well, if I need to do that, then that's this tool. If I want to do this, that's this tool, etc., etc. So slow down. You don't have to hurry. There are no such things as art emergencies. So make a plan, follow your plan, get the edit that you want. That's number one. Okay, number two is this. You come back and you're like, ooh, I got my raw file here. I'm kind of excited, but it's dark, so I'm going to go ahead and do Accent AI because that really helps pop the light. Maybe I should uh, brighten it a little bit with Develop. You know, I'm going to come in here and do the color thing and all that. Same thing I talked about a moment ago. You're just in a hurry, but the key thing here is that you skipped raw Develop. Assuming you have a raw file, which I recommend shooting because you have access to more data in the image file. And I think you'll get better control over your edit if you start with raw develop. And even if it's not a raw file, I think you're better off starting with the develop tool simply because it has so much power and so much control here over the light and the color, the sharpness, the noise, the verticals, the distortion. It controls so many aspects of the photo. I think it's a key place to get started to really help you set your photo down the path toward getting the edit that you want. So number two is don't skip raw develop or develop. Start there, control the light, get your photo, kind of your base photo, your canvas, if you will, get that right before you start to go do customizations around things like color and detail and some of the creative aspects in Luminar. Okay, number three, you come back from your shoot, you've got your photo, and you know, let's say you go into raw develop and you do some things and you're kind of playing around and you're making some adjustments and you know, you're, again, I'm just kind of riffing here in terms of what this edit might look like, but let's say I do that, then I go over to Accent AI because I really want to give it some pop, and so I do something like that, and then I'm like, well, maybe it needs a little bit of structure, you know, maybe it needs some golden hour, whatever it might be. Number three for me is using Accent AI too early in the editing process. It is Accent AI. I think of it as like an accent piece. I feel like it does a little bit better job overall to give you a good final result if you use it later in the process after you've done a lot of other things to control the light and color and things like that. I did a recent video all about that if you want to see that in a little bit more depth, but I highly recommend starting with your develop tool or raw develop if you have a raw file, going through that going through other tools and filters and controlling the light, and then using Accent AI as an accent. If you use it too early, it can get a little bit over the top kind of result because Accent AI pops color, but it pops some of the crunch, it pops some of the contrast, and you can get a little bit overcooked image, I think, if you use it too early in the process because what you end up doing is using it too much if you use it early in the process and it overcompensates for things that you could have done better by spending more time in raw develop or using some other tools. Okay, number four, once again, I've got this same image. I'm gonna come in and do a few things here just to kind of get my base kind of image looking the way I want it to look. I'm gonna come in and apply a little bit of saturation, vibrance, some temperature and tint adjustments. And then, you know what? I really like the colors in this image. I need to go adjust those colors. So I wanna pop that image. I really want some saturation here, my friends. I really wanna get this thing looking pretty intense because I love the color. Whoops, guess what I did? I did not control color. That's number four. You can control color much better. Number one, if you slow down, like I talked about earlier, 
But number two, if you use masks and perhaps come into the color tool and control specific color channels. If you just drag the saturation to the right, it saturates the entire image. That's a bit of a blunt instrument and it will cause the entire image to quickly get over the top and look like what I like to call clown vomit, which is basically every color is highly saturated and over the top. You're better off controlling the color, going in here to color and going into HSL and working with the hue or saturation, in many cases, and the luminance as well of some of these specific and individual color channels. Better control over the color, better, more realistic overall result. And by the way, in Neo, because you can use tools again and again and again, you can mask this in for specific areas of the photo and saturate or increase vibrance, change the hue or the luminance in specific areas with specific colors. So you have the ability to have lots of control over the color in an image in Luminar Neo take advantage of it. Don't just saturate. Don't just drag the saturation slider to the right to get an intense image. As fun as it is, and trust me, I've done it plenty of times, slow down, control the color with HSL and with masking. Okay, and number five is kind of similar to the last one. I'm going to come in here and pop the exposure a little bit because it's, you know, it's a dark photo. I'm going to come in here and let's say I've, you know, made some adjustments to color and, uh, you know, I like what I have and let's say I'm pretty happy with how the photo looks, but maybe I want to bring up a little bit of detail, a little bit of crunch. This is the challenge when you come in with Structure AI. If you just crank it to the right and do the same with the detail, all you're doing is, again, hitting it globally and you're causing perhaps a little bit too much crunch and texture across the entire photo. It looks unnatural in the sky. It looks unnatural in the grass. It looks overdone in the sand. Control this with masking. You have great masking tools in Luminar. Over here in masking, you can use a brush, a radial, a linear, or mask AI to target specific areas. Take advantage of those tools slow down, take your time, make a plan, think about it and what you want your result to be, and then apply those edits selectively with Structure AI or the details, whatever it may be. Don't just drag it to the right like a blunt instrument. Target, be specific, and don't forget also, like if you're brushing in, you can reduce opacity to get a slightly less intense effect on the photo. So that's it for this one, my friends. Those are five different things that you might be doing wrong and easy ways that you can take advantage of the power and the tools and the control in Luminar Neo to make sure that those things don't impact your final edit. Hope it gives you some ideas, my friends. Thank you for stopping by and watching today and hanging out. You guys take care of yourselves. If you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up, comments down below for feedback or other ideas you'd like me to cover here in Luminar Neo. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back soon with another video. You guys take care of yourselves, and until then, adios.